Hey folks, so let's discuss and unpack the new moon in Gemini happening on May 30, 2022. As usual, I'm off camera and doing this as a screencast so you can have a better visual appreciation of the configuration of the full moon. So what you're looking at is the chart for, as we said, the Gemini new moon taking place on May 30. So we would have left off at the total lunar eclipse blood moon in Scorpio on May 15. 15 slash 16 and i hope that some of you had a chance to observe it to look at it to take it in with your own eyes in all its splendor so in our last video we would have mentioned the importance of looking at the eclipse using your own perceptual faculties your own two eyes not just reading about it but taking it in for yourselves something which would have been very psychically stimulating on very deep levels. For my own part, I gathered with family and a couple of friends to watch the eclipse and we sat out in the garden and we watched the celestial spectacle from start to finish. And so here we are at the Gemini new moon coming on the heels of Mercury retrograde in Gemini. So Mercury, as we can see, is still retrograde, but it's now retrograde in Taurus. So just to recapitulate, Mercury would have been retrograde in the sign of Gemini from about uh, May 10 to May 23. Then by May 24, it would have retrograded back into Taurus. And just to note, we dedicated an entire video to discussing Mercury's retrograde period in Gemini Taurus and also Jupiter being in Aries. And so I'll put that in a pinned comment below the video and I'll also include a link on screen if you'd like to take a look at that. So Mercury there being retrograde, Mercury the dispositor, the sort of governing planet, so to speak, in relation to any factors in Gemini where this new moon falls. So as we take a look at the big picture here, as Mercury has been retrograde and retrograde in Gemini, its home sign, we've been in a process of recalibration of our perceptual function, which sort of culminates in a new moon in Gemini on May 30 here, uh, Mercury's sign. And so, as we pointed out in our Mercury retrograde video, in basic terms, Mercury retrograde signals to us, it symbolically represents or describes a sort of reorientation of our conscious perspective. So, Mercury retrograde periods on a basic level would support a sort of reorientation of our perspective relative to how we perceive certain things in our lives. And so we are now at the new moon in Gemini on the heels of Mercury being retrograde in the sign. So in basic terms, this would call our attention to how this reorientation of our conscious perspective, a Mercury retrograde process, how this recalibration of our perspective would support and lay the groundwork for a rebirth, a fresh new beginning in terms of how we think about certain issues in our lives. So Gemini, new moon, the sun and moon there joined up at nine degrees of the sign. So a fresh new beginning in terms of how we perceive, as we said, certain aspects of our lives, certain issues in our lives, the opportunity for a fresh approach perceptually, mentally, in how we think, how we process data and information. And well, why is this question of perception so important, so vital? Well, in very simple terms, your perception forms the very basis of how you navigate through your reality. So perception conditions behavior. You act in certain ways. You make certain choices based on the available information, the available data, based on the content of your perception based on what goes on and into your mind. So how you see your world, the kinds of perceptual calculations that you make, well, these make up the building blocks of your individual reality. So Gemini, a sign that 
calls our attention to a certain flow of processes within the human psyche. So one is the act of perception, two, the act of thinking, and three, rendering these perceptions and thoughts into language or into some kind of communication. So perceiving reality and naming it, observing reality and naming it. And so, well, from a certain standpoint, Gemini would call attention to the subject, the person or the entity doing the perceiving and the thinking, and then the object, the thing being perceived. So that is the duality of Gemini from a certain standpoint. But as we grow in increased understanding of the deeper mechanics of our consciousness, the deeper anatomy of our human consciousness, which some branches of science are now beginning to recognize. As we grow in this understanding of the deeper mechanics of our consciousness, we come to the understanding that the quality of consciousness, the perceptual filter of the perceiver has a profound impact on what is being perceived. And so there is a unity between the mind of the observer and the thing being observed. In other words, your quality of mind, the state of your own consciousness as you move through the world, conditions and filters how the world presents itself to you. And we can think about that from another perspective. So Mercury, Gemini's ruling planet, is never more than 28 degrees away from the sun. And so there is, let's say, a deeper implication here. The quality of your being, your awareness as an I, your broader consciousness, sun, impacts what you perceive and think, Mercury, and in turn impacts your very experience of your reality. So your perceptions set the boundaries of the reality that is available to you. And so as we're at the Gemini new moon, we can put a question on the table as we like to do. The quality of your thinking, your mind, your mental activity, how can that be more consciously directed by you to provide you with a more supportive, expansive, graceful experience of reality? So what are you feeding into your mind? What data and information, Gemini, is being put into your perceptual filter, which sets up the parameters of how you experience your reality? What are you feeding into your mind on a daily basis? What messages are being absorbed by your mind in relation to certain areas in your life? So perhaps you might do a little exercise at the Gemini new moon. Do an audit, let's say, of the data and information that you take in on a daily or weekly basis. So the YouTube channels you might watch, the people you follow on various social media platforms, the news you might take in, the subjects you pay attention to, the information you pay attention to on your devices and the shows you watch. And then when you finish that, take a few areas of importance to you, your relationships, your finances, perhaps your home life, your career, and see if you can even jot down the habitual thoughts that you have on these parts of your life. So be honest in terms of the everyday, let's say, mental stream of consciousness that you have in relation to these parts of your life. So you might jot down three or four sentences for each of the areas in your life that you have identified as being important. And so as you do this audit of the information that you take in and the habitual thoughts you have, well, there you have it. You would have somewhat of a picture, somewhat of an objective picture of the perceptual filters, the building blocks of mind that are conditioning the reality you experience. 
So do you like what you see? What do you think about what is going into your mind? Are there any inputs that you would like to adjust? So this would be a very simple but a powerful exercise nonetheless. So is there ooh, junk going into your mind that you would like to throw out? So your perceptual filter, the thing that is the engine behind generating your reality, would that would be made up of the information you take in and the habitual thoughts that you have. So the question is, well, what is the state of the engine that is generating your reality? And for those of you who can appreciate a car analogy, well, is there a lot of sludge in your engine? Because, well, your mind is the vehicle that transports you through reality as you interact with your world. But of course, you're not your mind. You are the consciousness that directs your mind, the driver that directs your own thoughts and perceptions. And so, well, if someone came up to you and said, well, every day I get in my car and I sit down and I wait for it to drive me to where it wants me to go, or every day I get in my car and I sit down and wait for any passerby to get in the car and drive me to where they want to go. Well, if someone said that to you, you'd think they've lost their noodles, their marbles. So if any apparently sane person came to you and said that, well, your idea of them would change in an instant. So you'd be at the very least very, very perplexed. But then well, perhaps if we're being truthful, we often give up control of our mind. We surrender control and authority over our mind to whoever or whatever. We go in the car and we sit down and we let whoever or whatever do the driving, taking us to a destination of their own choosing. And so if you wouldn't let a stranger enter your car and take you to where they want to go, well, it begs the question, why would you just let anyone or anything usurp, usurp your own agency in determining where your mind goes? So why would you allow someone else complete power to set up your reality and how you navigate within it? And so, well, as we look at the configuration of the new moon here, we find Mercury retrograde, the governing planet, so to speak, of this uh, Gemini sun and moon. We find Mercury squaring up with Saturn. So Mercury there at 26 degrees Taurus, squaring up with Saturn at 25 degrees Aquarius. So we have a few things to think about. One is the idea of pruning that Saturn cutting down, shaving down the unnecessary waste, the sludge material in the mind, shaving down what's unnecessary, pulling up your socks in relation to what goes into your mind, Mercury. And the deeper evolutionary imperative to be in a relationship of more sovereign authority that Saturn relative to the content that goes into your mind, Mercury. So the work that goes into that. So where in my life might I need to learn to take a stance of more authority in terms of what goes into my mind? And we see here too that Mercury is engaging Pluto in a trine. So Mercury, as we said, 26 Taurus, Pluto there, 28 Capricorn. So Pluto there always lending an invitation to greater empowerment. So empowerment of the mind, empowering the mind, having perceptions that lend themselves to fostering more personal power by deciding to work on taking more sovereign control and authority, Saturn, in relation to what goes into your mind. So Saturn, the boundary maker, here is where I am erecting my boundary. I am deciding to have higher standards, Saturn, for what I allow into my mind, Mercury. I'm cutting out the data, information, the content that does not augment my thoughts to a higher standard, a higher standard that 
enriches my living at Saturn their higher standards so as I begin a new cycle in relation to how I think perceive the data I take in I'm doing some pruning work Saturn I'm putting up some boundaries and so as we look further here at the configuration of this new moon well we see that we have the Gemini Sun and Moon engaged in a sextile 60 degree angular relationship with Mars and Jupiter there in Aries so Mars Jupiter in Aries the invitation toward exploring and moving out into fresh territory more expansive territory so moving out from beyond where you've been into fresh territory so this is a Gemini new moon colored by this Mars Jupiter conjunction in Aries so the idea of entering fresh new territories of the mind moving out into new experience in terms of learning information understanding new territories as we said of mind so expanding your mental and conceptual territory beyond where you've been so a new cycle that supports expanding your mental and perceptual territory beyond where you've been so that you are able to conceive a new scope for action Mars yes so new fresh ideas that you are inspired to enact new and novel that's Aries more expansive vistas of awareness that you are now able to move toward but in order to do that you often have to do what reduce your investment in and attention to the old things that would have formally captured your attention so you have to be willing to cut down your attention to the old habitual things your mind would have been engaged in so a mercury Saturn process so in order to move to or to move into a more expansive experience of your mind and therefore what's available to you in your reality you would have to confront and move beyond the things that limit the mind so another dimension of that mercury Saturn square from a process standpoint so the process of learning to move beyond the things that limit Saturn your mind mercury so the habitual thoughts and data that limit the scope of what you're able to perceive mercury so Mars Jupiter in Aries in a harmonic with the Gemini Sun and Moon sail out into new waters in terms of the territory of mind that is available to you activate new portions of your mind by reducing your attention to the old habitual thoughts you would have so open up new dimensions of your consciousness by withdrawing withdrawing your energy and attention from what would limit your awareness so we often say that we want a more enriching and expansive experience of reality but in truth we're not willing to relinquish the old patterns of thought that prevent us from stepping into that new experience of reality so there's that now there is another let's say dimension of this discussion that we need to raise at this Gemini new moon so we live in a time friends of information overload Gemini where the connection of the body and the mind is often split by too much mental activity and distraction especially by way of our devices and I do understand the irony folks of you listening to this on your devices we're not condemning devices we're, what we're doing is calling attention to just the hyper mental activity so we find ourselves often living in a cloud of hyper mental activity cut off from connection to the physical body and the body of course is a crucial part 
of decoding and integrating data into your whole awareness, your whole consciousness. So something that Mercury in Taurus calls our attention to. The relationship between the body physical, Taurus, and the mind's ability to process, Mercury. So hyper-mental activity, which the conditions of our world encourage, well, it cuts off connection to the body, which is a necessary site of integration of data. So you integrate, you integrate rather data through the mind, working in concert with the body and with nature. So now, especially for those of you who are interested in, let's say, exploring the avenues of your own consciousness and the spiritual expansion that takes place in that process at this time on the planet, well, there is only so much reading and listening to information you can do, taking courses, webinars, all of it, to access more expansive arenas of consciousness and spiritual expansion to apprehend the true nature of the sensible world, a Gemini process, and to apprehend reality as a consciousness expressing through a body in an apparently physical world. Well, you're not going to integrate the answers by taking in all of this information and data, data, data. In other words, you're not going to find, friends, the answers to the deepest questions you have about your reality by swiping on your phone all day. So certainly, information and data can help to unlock certain perceptions within you and help you along the way to trigger certain portions of your awareness to open up, yes, but that does not replace engaging reality for yourself. So you don't learn to drive by reading about driving. You have to get into the car and drive it. You have to directly participate with your own consciousness and learn about it and its potentials, the potentials of your human consciousness by being involved with it intimately, by being involved with your own psyche and being confident enough to go out into the field of reality and collect your own observations and data, a Gemini process. So engage reality for yourself. And some of us, well, we only quote this teacher or that teacher. So we say, so-and-so said X, Y, Z, and so-and-so teacher said A, B, C. Well, what do you say? What do you say? So begin to develop your own ability to directly apprehend the reality around you in which you are placed within. What do you think? Begin to flex the muscles of your own consciousness. It doesn't mean, friends, that you're always correct or that you throw out sound data and information that comes from someone else. But see if you can begin to collect your own data about reality and start to strengthen some of those muscles in your natural, human, organic, spiritual anatomy of consciousness. So as a human, you are naturally, organically, bio-spiritually equipped to decode the nature of reality around you. And of course, things can interrupt or thwart that process as they have historically on our world. But as reality gets more confusing in these Neptune in Pisces years, as the data on our devices cannot necessarily be relied on to always give you an accurate picture of reality, you will be well served by using your own discriminating faculties, the Mercury Virgo matrix. So listen to the body, Mercury in Taurus, and Mercury there in Taurus, right there at the Taurus North Node. So let your body guide you with its own signals in terms of sussing out data. So 
Look up friends into the starry night. Sit down and listen to reality and the feedback that it gives you and experience the delight of making your own discoveries and the flowering of your own mind. So a few things to think about at this Gemini new moon. All right, so reminding you as usual that I'm available for a range of private astrological counseling, teaching consultations and packages and links to that are in the description box below where you'll also find links to other astrological resources for download and a link to join my email list if you'd like these new and full moon reflections to be sent to your inbox. So wishing you an enjoyable Gemini new moon and until next time, talk soon. Bye.